my name is Jennifer Swanson, and I'm the author of Astronaut Aquanaut, How Space Science and Sea Science Interact. Today, I want to know, would you rather be an astronaut or an aquanaut? Now wait, don't tell me. So before we decide, let's talk a little bit about the type of environment that you might find when you go up in space or down in the ocean. So first question, when you go up in space, what will it, what will the temperature be like? Will it be hot or cold? Hmm, what do you think? So it depends. So if you are in a spaceship or in the International Space Station and you are on this side close to the sun, it could be very bright and very hot. If you are on the side of the Earth that is away from the sun, um, then it could be very dark and very cold. So you have two different temperatures. Now, when you go down into the ocean, what will the temperature be? Well, at the surface of the ocean, it'll be warm, right? Because the sun is here and it's beating down on the ocean. But as you go down, down, down into the ocean, what happens? The sun can't reach down there, so it's going to be cold and very dark, very dark. Okay, so there are a few things that are the same in space and in the ocean, which you may not think of. The first one is kind of easy. It's something that you need to take with you. I'll give you a hint. Take a deep breath and let it out. Okay, what did you just do? You breathed in oxygen. Is there oxygen in space? Nope. Is there oxygen under the water? Well, there's oxygen in the water, but we can't really breathe that. So you better take some oxygen with you if you're going either places. Okay. The other cool thing that is similar is what do you do in space that you also do in the water? You kind of float. Yes, you're floating. So in space, we float because there is very little gravity. Okay, we don't say no gravity. We say very little gravity. It's called microgravity. When we're in the water, though, what do you do? You float right? The water keeps you up. That force is called buoyancy. So now we have two different forces where we float in both places. Now I have to ask you, raise your hand if you would like to float to school, because I think that would be pretty cool, personally. Now the last force that we need to talk a little bit about is called pressure. And pressure is, um, is the pressure of the atmosphere, and it's actually pushing down on you right now, and you don't even feel it. Okay, you have pressure coming down on you. Um, when you go into space, there's very little atmosphere, so there's no atmospheric pressure up there. When you go down into the ocean, however, the atmospheric pressure gets really, really, really heavy. It gets very, it, it, is, it compounds, and it's very dense on, on top of you. So here's a cool little experiment. If you are this bottle, this is you. So as you're just sitting here on the earth, you actually have pressure. This is my hand. This is the atmospheric pressure pushing down on you like this, right? You probably don't even feel it. It'd be like if somebody had their hand in your head, but you, you wouldn't even feel it. Okay. If you go up into space, there's no pressure. So you could kind of imagine that it'll sort of float around right? It'll just float around, okay? If you go down, down, down in the ocean, this is what happens to you. Yes, so that is you, remember? That's you, okay. So the atmospheric pressure gets so dense and hard, pushes down on you, that it could do this to you, but that is why you are always in a some sort of craft, so you could be in a submersible, a submarine, or a very special spacesuit that allows for the pressure that's, that's happening. So you don't actually squish like that. Okay, so those are the different things you're going to feel. So if you were going to go into space or down the ocean, you'd have to think about all of these different things. Now, when you're up there, are you just going to float around? No, let's talk about where you would live. So this right here 
is a mock-up of the International Space Station. And you can see all of the different parts of it here. Okay, you would have a place to live, a place to work, um, a place to eat, and a place to sleep. That's if you are in space. If you're under the ocean, we have this, which is called Aquarius. It is the only underwater research lab in the world. It's off the coast of Florida, and it has all the same things. A place to sleep, a place to eat, and a place to work and do research. We also have this cool thing over here called, whoops, called the wet porch, where as you can see, the scuba diver, or the aquanaut as we call them, is coming up from out of the ocean, which is beneath. So that's a place where you would live and work. So you have to think about that. Which of these two places would you go to and want to live and work there? And the last thing that we would think we're going to talk about is which of these two suits would you rather wear? Okay, so this one is the aquanaut suit that you might wear if you were going to go into very, very deep diving. And this is the astronaut suit that you would wear if you're going to go out in space. Now, of course, they don't wear either of these if they're inside the International Space Station or inside the um, Aquarius. They're only going to wear that when they're out in the environment. So which of those two suits do you think you would like to wear? Hmm, okay. So now it's time. We've told you what it's going to be like up there. We've told you where you're li going to live, what kind of suits that you would have. So what would you be? Would you rather be an astronaut or an aquanaut? That is something that you get to decide. And if you want to look up more information about these, talk to your parents or your teacher. You can go to look up, you can do an internet search on NASA to learn all about the International Space Station. And you can do an internet search on Aquarius, the underwater research lab, and see how that works. They have videos of things that happen in there. You can see the aquanauts moving around out in the ocean. You can see the astronauts going out in space. And then maybe you would want to draw your own spacesuit. So these are all cool things that you could do with this topic. And you can allow yourself to dream and explore, which is what any true lover of science would do. So ha I hope you enjoyed this today. You can find me at my website, jenniferswansonbooks.com. There's also a um, teacher's guide to go with the astronaut aquanaut book. But go out, have fun, and explore. <laughs>